Finding the Laplace transform of a unit step function is no problem. Since the step function is zero for t less than capital T, that part of the integral contributes nothing. So we just replace the lower limit by capital T. In the future, we don't have to actually do the integration, we just apply this formula. It's similar to how you learn to take derivatives. Notice that this result agrees with the Laplace transform of the constant function 1 when capital T equals 0. That's because the step function when capital T equals 0 is 1 for all positive times. And negative times just don't matter when you're taking the Laplace transform. One last building block is the Laplace transform of an impulse. I haven't talked about integration with the delta function, but if you're curious, you could take the transform of our normalized window function, delta sub epsilon, and then let epsilon go to zero. Or you could solve the initial value problem, x prime equals delta times the exponential. Either way, you would get the result, and it turns out to be very simple. An important special case here is when capital T is equal to zero, so an impulse right away, and its transform is the constant function one. One little sidebar, if you look at the transforms of h and delta, it's clear that the transform of delta is s times the transform of h, which is what happens when we take a derivative. So it looks like the delta function is the derivative of a unit step function. And in a sense, that's true, although not in the usual way we talk about derivatives. Back to the main story. The derivation of the step function generalizes to an important result commonly known as the shift theorem. I'll skip the derivation. Here's the formula. This thing that we're taking the transform of on the left is just a delayed onset of the function f. We'll use this formula in various ways. We use it um, when we're going from left to right in this equation, but it's also useful for when we have something on the right and we want to go back to, to the thing on the left. Let me do an example showing how to use Laplace transforms to solve an imp impulse forcing problem. We start by transforming everything that you see in the ODE. We can put in the initial condition. And solve for capital X. That's the transform of the solution that we're trying to find. So how do we invert this thing to find the x of t? Well, I'm going to write capital X as the product of e to the negative 5s times capital Y of s, which I define to be 1 over s plus 3. Now here's the shift theorem again. I'm going to replace capital T with 5 and F with Y. Now where did I come up with capital T equaling 5? It comes from the exponential that's in X of S. So in fact, this thing here is actually e to the minus 5S times y, capital Y of s, and that, I said, is equal to capital X of s. So since the transform of the thing on the left is equal to the transform of little x, we conclude that x of t is this thing in the brackets, h of t minus 5 times y of t minus 5. So to finish the job, we just have to get a formula for y 
Well, from the definition that I made for capital Y, this is easily inverted to give us little y of t as e to the minus 3t. Finally then, x of t is the step function at t minus 5 times y at t minus 5, which is t replaced by t minus 5. We'll do more with Laplace transforms later on in the course, but there's one more deep fact. When we transform a differential equation and solve for capital X, we get that it's 1 over S minus A times the transform of the forcing function. This multiplier out in front is called the transfer function. Often engineers use transfer functions and linear ODEs kind of interchangeably. The idea is that it transfers the input, or the forcing function, to an output, which is the solution or the behavior of the system. And then finally, since a delta, delta of t, has transform equal to the constant function 1, then we conclude that the transfer function is actually the Laplace transform of the impulse response. In theory, if you know the impulse response of a system, then you take its transform and you can solve for the transform with any forcing function.